click the live stream button. So just hit the live stream button right just right now. So welcome back, guys, to another live stream episode of Box Mining. It is Monday morning here. It is a pretty good morning, to be honest. I've seen cryptocurrencies go up quite a lot over the last few hours. So it's pretty exciting. We're going to talk a lot about some opportunities this week, so a lot has happened, stimulus checks, etc. That's leading people and point, pushing people towards Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So we'll talk about that today. We'll also have some news and updates. This regards a lot to two major hacks that happened over the past few days. I just want to just combine them all together. There was both Meerkat, all right, some updates on that, which are a little bit surprising, and you'll see why. And I'll talk about the whole saga and the whole story. We also have paid network. There's analysis on what happened to the network overall itself as well. So we'll talk a little bit about the whole what's happening on the decentralized finance space. Then we have a few things on NFTs. It seems like every week we can't really talk about crypto without talking about these non-fungible tokens. They're not only great for art, you know, we've got some Banksy's going on, but we also have Jack Dorsley. He's also selling his first ever tweet as a NFT, a non-fungible token. This is going to be the new collector's dream. If you're going to collect something ever in life and you hope it appreciates in value, NFTs. It's 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 this year. It's it's heating up a lot. So we'll talk a little bit about what's happening there and what's going on. So without further ado, guys, we're gonna do this. I just have to say apologies for starting a little bit late today. So it turns out that this is a screen that I use to write stuff on. So I have a little pen here to write stuff on. Turns out that for some reason this didn't work, and I just took my computer down with it. So. Yeah, I'm still need to figure out why it doesn't work. Um, but for now, I'm just going to give up on trying to fix it this morning. And yeah, we're going to start the episode. So um, that's going on. We also have some questions. People are asking about plant. So we got plant back here. So plant is still alive. It's still alive. It's a beautiful plant. It's a it's the longest I've ever had a plant. So I have people doubting my plant, you know, keeping abilities. I'm still good. I'm still good. It's a real plant, real plant, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's alive, it's alive, it's alive. Anyways, uh, let's go and head towards FAT and talk about everything that's going on today and we'll answer a lot of questions as well. So, being on Monday stream, welcome back to the channel. Lots going on this week and I'll definitely say if you guys are new to this channel, make sure you just click the subscribe button, click that like button down below. It really does help this channel. Just destroy that like button. Really, really appreciate it. We have like people coming in slowly. So I just hit those likes up until we have 200 likes today. That's the objective. That's the end goal objective of everything here today. So smash those up and let's get started. <laughs> All right, folks. All right, folks. So starting off, let's just take a l overall, very quick look at the market so far. And we always do this because we want to see what the overall sentiment is like. And being Bitcoin at above 50,000, that's always giving people a lot of confidence. I know, you know, these psychological things, right? If it's below 50,000, it's people are happy. Below 40, below 40,000, it becomes 49, right? The number is not as great. It's not as cool as sounding, you know, 50. 50 is good. 50K. So yeah, so we're at, so we're at 50k right now, and we we cover quite a bit over the weekend. Same thing with um, Ethereum. So ETH is at a very key point right now. It's at seventeen hundred dollars. So yet again, since last stream, I think a lot of pe people were a little bit scared. You know, we fell below fifteen hundred dollars. People are like, oh look, we're we're the lower half of that one. You know, lower half of one thousand. Now we're closer to two thousand than to one thousand. So I think there's always going to be exciting for that. So overall, the current market conditions are pretty much very perfect at this current point. Now, we definitely do have a lot of recovery going on. So we have engine coin still pushing up. That's been crazy. You guys know I'm an engine coin holder. And finally, it's getting some of the action. We also have De um, DeFi flagship Yearn Finance is moving up. I think a few people were kind of eyeing Yearn for the past few weeks because we got 
you know, drops in decentralized finance sector, right? We had DeFi sector taking some hits. We have SNX taking some hits. We had Wi-Fi all the way down to 30K. But this month or this week right now, we see DeFi kind of having that recovery here. So we have for your earn, we have reserve rights, RSR token, we have REN, we have Uniswap, all moving double digits in the last 24 hours. So you definitely see that strength and confidence returning to DeFi, even though I think we did have a little bit of a shakeup, you know, with all that paid hack and everything that was going on. People are afraid, but they're not deterred, right? And this is the um, issue with and what's everything's going on. It's very experimental in the space. And think some things work, some things just complete fall flat on their faces, and it blows up and takes the whole community with it. So we have that recovery as well. People are realizing, yeah, you know what? Yes. It's okay. I think in many ways, okay, it's a little bit sad to say, but maybe we like pain in crypto. Maybe that's the case. You know, millions of dollars hacked, no problem. We'll deal with it later. It's all right. But anyway, so that's kind of the overall sentiment on the markets as of this point. So let's take a very closer look to what's happening on the Bitcoin side, the Bitcoin. So yeah, Bitcoin, you can definitely see that there were very, very strong support at 46K. So that came in on the weekend and now we're moving all the way up. A lot of this is due to the current political environment. We definitely know that crypto and current politics is very, very linked together at this current point because the next stimulus check is going to happen in the U.S. We also have a little bit of action in China as well that's also pushing crypto prices back up on the trajectory again. And it seems almost the same story is coming in for Ethereum as well. So I've got the Ethereum charts prepared for you guys again. So I haven't moved too much in terms of what I'm eyeing here. So I'm seeing, you know, for, for both Bitcoin and Ethereum, I have the channel that it's moving in. I'm I've identified where the supports are. So seeing that the supports have been tested and, you know, we successfully defended 46K. Well, almost, almost a little bit. Maybe I'll move the, down a little bit. But definitely seeing that as a positive sign. And a lot of people are eyeing that too, right? The same thing goes with Ethereum. People were eyeing to see where the support will kick in and if they can enter in new positions. And this is why going up is very interesting as well. So we're no longer needing to test that support where this week we could potentially eye for another push as well, especially with the how the current politics are going on right now. It's always been a case, I feel like, it's always been a case that people see economic recovery and then they're trying to be undecided on whether or not it's going to be good for crypto. But let's be honest here. There's going to be a lot of effort moving forward. And we saw that huge push factor, right? This huge push factor, this push factor both towards um, new technologies because there's some broken things going on with how the current financial centralized financial system is set up, but also because of more money being printed. Every time more money is being printed, it always leads to people who are holding the US dollar, right? Because that's going to get a little bit of inflation potentially, right? The US government's, <laughs> that's that's on the uh, on the roadmap, on the roadmap, even though they say they might not be, it's, it's potentially on the roadmap of so much money being printed. I think 40% of the whole circulating supply of US dollars has been printed over the last year and a half, right? This is not a small number, folks. This is a huge number. So inflation hasn't exactly hit yet because, well, prices haven't risen by 40% at this current point, but people are definitely afraid and people who are holding US dollar are definitely concerned. And that's been the overriding concern for the past few, well, a few months to say the least. So that's kind of what's happening here. I do want to take a very quick look at the Bitcoin rainbow chart as well. This is the other chart that's always very, very interesting. It goes to show how much kind of the, the cycles in play. So why it works, why, why it's kind of relevant is that Bitcoin tends to stay on this rainbow chart. Right. And right now it is heating up and we do have these cycles. Right. So going from 2013 and went up in popular, like it, went, it hit the top of the rainbow and it went down to the blue section, hit the bottom of the rainbow. Right. So the price went up to a thousand and went dove all the way down to three thousand. And then a similar thing happened with twenty thousand. Right. In 2017, then it dove down to three thousand. So you can notice here that um, it's a logarithmic chart. This is why. Uh, moving up one time, uh, one block is 10x the price. So this is kind of 
a little bit of how it works right now is how this rainbow is being fitted on here. But we can definitely see that this time we're also going moving up on this chart again. So we're at 50k right now for um right now, and it's heating up. It's definitely you can definitely see Bitcoin heating up, and the hope here, of course, right? The hope medium or you know um. <laughs> Everyone wants to know wants to know if numbers go up, but if you if you do want to look at the cycle, and I do actually under kind of believe that these cycles do come into play. Well, this chart is predicting a territory of one hundred and forty thousand dollars for the price of Bitcoin, which is quite interesting, right? If we move up here um, towards maybe. Um, the maximum bubble territory, bubble territory, as it's called on this chart, but we have it at around, I would say around, you know, June, July ish. That could be a possibility. Who knows, right? With the unpredictability of this market, but it could be the case that you know the upwards were predicting of around 140k. These numbers are floating around. I do, do want to say and I do want to warn people. And something I don't really do on this channel a lot is do price predictions. I don't think it's very helpful. And one of the reasons why is because people want to hear big numbers, right? So this is why it kind of spreads on the internet like wildfire. Just like in 2017, John McAfee tweeted and said, I'm not tweeted. He went on camera to say, yo, Bitcoin, $1 million by the 2020. And it got spread like wildfire, right? Because this is a known figure. He was like, I'm going to eat my dick if Bitcoin doesn't pass 2020 by, uh, Bitcoin doesn't pass a million by 2020. So price predictions are dangerous because media loves it, right? Media loves it. They love to retweet it. They love that tension. They love the drama, especially ad comments like, I'll eat my di own dick if, um, <laughs> if that goes along. So, this is quite dangerous, and I definitely see that going on. So every time when Bitcoin increases in popularity, we see mainstream media coming in, you know, they interview people with these outlandish claims. And I relatively find that very unhelpful in the space, because if you're rational about this, if you're rational about this, right, Bitcoin, the long term objective is to replace current currencies could replace all fiat, right? It's sound money. But how long it takes for this to really get adopted, to come into play, that takes a longer time. And also, I just want to bring along as well, I think cryptocurrencies are all being lumped together and confused. And there's a lot of innovation in this space. I think this whole decade is going to be that decade for crypto. If you see where all the unicorns are, if you look at Binance, right? This exchange that came out of nowhere in 2017, now to become a dominant figure in the space, a billion dollar industry. Well, yeah, it, it, these are unicorns, right? These are unicorns that Silicon Valley is after and it's coming out of crypto. Very similar story of Coinbase. You know, Coinbase, they're getting their IPO. They're going to become a publicly listed company this year. They went through that. They've been reporting these huge numbers, right? They've been reporting these huge numbers for trading fees. So definitely the attention this year is on blockchain and cryptocurrencies. This whole entire sector is going to become like the new internet. It's I hate that analogy too. But it does make sense in a way where there is going to be a lot of hype. We definitely see that. And we definitely see that also going on in the altcoin space as well. Because obviously the altcoin space is where the innovation is coming. This chart is also quite interesting. So if you actually look at the cryptocurrency, Bitcoin versus the altcoins, there's something called the altcoin season. And this is a chart to index the altcoin season. So this is also being relatively kind of vaguely useful to see what's going on. But basically what happens if, if you're moving out from blue to red, the more red it gets, the more of an altcoin season it becomes where all the alt cryptocurrencies are moving up quite aggressively. So right now the current index is at 61. So it's a, it's above 50. So it's it's beyond normal levels, but it's not hitting the 100 or hitting above the altcoin mark of around 80. So this is quite interesting I would say this year it's going to be a 50-50 Bitcoin year or altcoin year. Hmm, it's going to be 50-50 and altcoins are growing quite aggressively as well. I'm definitely looking for an altcoin season, mini another um mini push up here. I think this is this is going to be where it gets very interesting. I mean, um, you definitely know I hold portfolios of all coins. I'm trying not to be too biased here, but definitely deep down inside, you know, um, hoping for a lot of action on the altcoin front as well, because that's where the innovation is coming in from, right? If you remember all these coins, I think something that surprised me, right, is 
there's these arguments in crypto about you know Bitcoin versus Ethereum, and then people who really love Bitcoin, the Bitcoin maximalists, will think that Ethereum is a scam. They think, oh, it's an altcoin. Anything that's not Bitcoin is a scam, but it's not, right? Over these past few years, what you're realizing is that Ethereum is growing more and more powerful because more and more tools are being built on it. When it first launched, obviously, you know, Ethereum looked the way it is. When it first launched, there wasn't much going on. It was doing most, like mostly it was used for fundraisers and people saw that was very shady and scammy. But now this year with decentralized finances powering a lot of these trades, it's completely changed the exchange landscape too. Don't let us not forget how much Uniswap completely changed the way exchanges operate because there's so much now, like right now, this year, Coins and projects can just list on Uniswap, provide the liquidity, and it's got a good trading market going on. This is a very different scene from 2017, where the whole community was very, very reliant on exchanges. You know, getting lists on Binance was a huge, huge ordeal. But now a lot of projects are just saying, you know what? Yeah, I don't really need Binance. We don't really need Bitmax. We don't really need all these like smaller exchanges. Maybe Binance, the big one, list the big B lists us, but the smaller ones. Like gate.io, someone's asking me, oh, it's gate.io. Say, you know, you know what? Like, if you don't have to use centralized exchange, just not always need it, right? So I definitely see that kind of the shift in power. So the the big centralized exchanges, they're on their toes. They're constantly trying to like list new coins right now, innovation zone on Binance. This is that direct response to what's happening on decentralized um, decentralized finance with Uniswap. And even Binance Smart Chain is a direct response to Ethereum as well. So you can definitely see how Ethereum has completely disrupted this cryptocurrency space. And the same thing with DeFi as well. The whole DeFi scene is heating up and I definitely see but a lots of potential right now happening to see. So anyways, let's go. That's beyond. That's the meta uh, for this week. I definitely feel, feel like this week there's going to be a lot of action, especially because all right, I'm not going to jinx. I'm not going to try not to jinx it. But, you know, Monday, bloody Mondays were a thing, right? We're talking, we're saying last week, I think I jinxed it last week saying uh, on Monday, on Monday, my time on Asia time, right? So Monday Asia time is Sunday in the US, right? And on Monday my time, I was like, oh, there wasn't any bloody Monday. There was a major falls in cryptocurrencies last week on my Monday. But towards the end of the day, as America woke up, well, bloody Monday came, right? It was just a little bit delayed. So last week I jinxed it a little bit. So apologies on that front. But yeah, so today is yet again, it's another Monday for us in Asia. Asia's, uh, Asian, no bears here, right? Bears are not dumping here, right? So we're going to have to see what happens when America uh, wakes up. And then we'll have to see if that, mo that, that bloody Monday comes. But if there's no bloody Mondays this week, you know, both Bitcoin and Ethereum are well primed to move to the upper bounds to see, to test where the resistance is. Rather, to just, to do this, rather than doing a safety check this week, right? Checking... <laughs> Is there support at 37,000 or, oh, sorry, 30, 30, 1,300 or 1,400? If there's support here, this week we could potentially go up to the upper bounds, hopefully, and test there. Not financial advice, of course. So that's why I'm pretty optimistic at this current point. Anyway, so we're at this point now where uh, moving up, and then let's take a very quick quick look at what's happening on the news as well. So obviously, there's a lot of checks. So we, Bitcoin hits 31, 51k as the U.S. Senate passes a 1.9 trillion dollar stimulus check. I mean, well, this was actually well expected, to be honest. All right, I mean, uh, it was bound to happen, right? It was like with the current world the way it is i'm gonna be very very sensitive and touchy here at this current point you know because everyone is so touchy about these words these difficult times that we are in but with these difficult times that we are in there is more money more and more money being printed into the ring of 1.9 trillion dollars i mean think about think about how much money that is right if you look at the total market cap of crypto at this current point it's 1.6 trillion dollars um you know, it's, it's it's okay. It's considerably pretty good. I mean, that's not bad. But they're printing, um, let's see here. They're printing that same amount in one event. All right, give me a sec. Give me a sec. Um, so you can you can definitely see how bad I am at using my I've got, I've got my boomer moment right here where I can no longer find my news piece that I was looking at. But 
All right, there we go. So yeah, so $1.9 trillion being printed, magic money, magic fiat money coming out and pretty much there. So the other thing that's quite interesting, I just want to highlight is um, well on this as well that um, Joseph puts in his article, and I think this is quite important, is this copy happy, copycat behavior as well. So may to show show, right? This is the, uh, this app, um, okay, it's, so this is the first Chinese listed company to buy a large amount of Bitcoin. So Chinese companies can definitely be copycats, right? So the news is that May2 bought $400 million worth of Bitcoin and Ethereum. So May2 being a publicly listed company, they went out and said, yo, you know what? We're going to follow Elon Musk. And we're also going to put some Bitcoin on our balance sheets. And I think this is starting a new trend in China because... This year, obviously, Elon started a trend and said, you know what, I'm going to buy $1.5 billion of Bitcoin. He's definitely a little bit more baller than May 2 right there. But, you know, the Chinese, they, they're definitely looking and eyeing what's happening, right? If this is a trend, because Elon's immensely popular in China as well, everyone is also jumping on that bandwagon, right? So we have American companies, we have Chinese customer companies. This is the ch first Chinese company to make that move, but I definitely see it's going to be a trend. And Meitu is not a small company too. Meitu Shoushou is the one that all Chinese girls, is the app that all Chinese girls have to use, right? This is the one that you take a photo of yourself and it just photoshops yourself to the Max, right? May 2 show show is where you become a living model, a living work of art because you take a photo and then all the AI and it just processes your photo. So it looks super fake AF, but then at the same time, you look like a living god, right? So that's the May 2 show show app. And obviously they made a lot of money from that and they're investing Bitcoin. Why is Bitcoin relevant to their company? Not very. It's just because it's cool to follow Elon Musk, right? And this is going to start that new trend going forward. I mean, Looking at their justification, Meitu said that crypto has enough room for appreciation. Oh, yes, it does. And it can, it can diversify the risk of holding cash in fund management. Affected by this, there may be more Chinese companies buying Bitcoin to boost their stock prices. You see, that's that's the real reason, right? Because obviously, Meitu being a publicly listed company, they want to be hip. Right? They want to be on the news. Yo, we're hip. We're like Elon. We are smart. We need to boost up stock prices. We need to get in this whole crypto game. And I think this is going to be the trendsetter for this year. Anyways, um, I definitely see that this is like, if you want looking for fundamental reasons of why Bitcoin is going to appreciate this year, this will be one of them. Companies jumping on the crypto bandwagon. Obviously, this isn't the most sustainable development, to be honest. All right, I'm going to put that out there where people just jump on the train just because it's the super hot and fancy one but at the same time it's going to be a big factor because we've been hearing a lot of companies especially in asia right now about acquiring crypto companies or trying to get crypto exposure or trying to be hit because that's what investors are looking for right now so anyways this is <laughs> this is where elon really did change how big, big it is so crypto fiend says elon tusk is big in china absolutely i mean if you just um know what's happening with tesla so tesla set up these super factories in the giga factory in shanghai already it's the first factory that's like fully Western owned. So typically speaking, Chinese government would um, make companies like um, car manufacturers build their factories in collaboration with someone. But Tesla, they did something completely different. They're just like, <laughs> they managed to build their own super factory. They also lowered the price of the EV to fall within the government regulations, or not the regulations, the government promotions. So they, they're in that price bracket to get the most amount of tax kind of benefit. So yeah, they're, they're pushing like super aggressive in China right now. I mean, even even Elon did that strip dance in China, right? I mean, that's that's how much he's willing to, to jump in and um, Chinese love him. Chinese just love him at this current point. So, um, <laughs> all right. So uh, there's a few questions. So um, uh, this is a good question as well. Max Max uh, 144 says, did he talk about Paydia that just got here? So let's talk about some negative news to balance everything out. So Paid Network got a massive hit. Right. So if you guys um, took a look, there were two kind of major hacks that appeared over the weekend. So paid pretty much got eliminated, obliterated here. You can see that huge dump. All right. Let me just take a look at that. Pew! That dump that just happened right here went from two dollars to twenty four cents. So that was a paid hack. All right. So that was pretty devastating to a lot. So, OK, I'm going to 
be I want to declare myself here and say I didn't own any paid. It was one of those projects that I didn't jump onto, so I wasn't like. I wasn't like on the hour following everything that was going on with Paige. So I never talked about this on my channel, nor did I have anything. Uh, I didn't hold any Paige, but I think it's so important to talk about. So they definitely did take a nose dive here. So they lost pretty much at this current point. Um, yeah, 90% of their value. So let's take a look at the paid network postmortem. So they did get hacked and this is what they kind of happened. So. The attacker used a compromised private key to the original contract deployer to leverage the upgrade function of the smart contract. The attacker then proceeded to upgrade to a new smart contract, which he had the ability to burn and remint tokens. With the upgraded smart contract, the attacker then minted <laughs> what is this? 59 million paid tokens and then proceed to sell 2 million. <laughs> he was being nice, right? He was being nice. He was like, you know what? I'm gonna mint 59 million for free. Just create these tokens out of thin air. I'm gonna just just gonna dump a portion of that. It's gonna dump 2.5 million dollars. So you essentially drained the the Uniswap pool, right? So this is what people who are caught in there, and then he just drained the pool. He or she, right? Maybe a she as well. So this is pretty devastating, and obviously. This this is probably the weirdest part, all right? So let me give a quick recap, right, of what kind of happened. So with these tokens, typically speaking, we know and we can trade tokens because we know that the developers are not evil and they're not going to execute a major increase in the supply of tokens. If developers had the opportunity to create infinite supply in every token, it's going to be even worse than the money printer that's happening in fiat, right? So what happened here? So this is very suspicious, all right? And this um, this is something that the paid network has not talked about. The attacker used a compromised private key to the original contract deployer. This meant that this, I don't know how that happened. You know, typically speaking, like, typically speaking for these t teams to execute and to create contracts, a lot of the times these private keys are held on hardware wallets like ledgers and treasures. So they're very much need to be physically pressing the button. If the, if the devices are set up properly, these keys will not be exposed on the internet. So it might be the case that this is an internal job and this is, a, I think it's a situation where security analysts will come in and say something, but the developers most likely probably knew or worked with this person in the past, very likely, because at the end of the day, we don't see this happening on every contract. But anyway, so they used they used a private key to original contract deployer and upgraded the contract and was able to create this huge amount of tokens, drastically inflating the supply of paid, right? So if you look at the circulating supply, so the circulating supply of paid was, you know, 100 million, let's see, let's see here. Circulating is 100 million and the hacker managed to create 50, uh, yeah, 59 million dollars, right? So yeah, it's like, it's like, nearly 50% of the entire supply. He probably wanted to empty out the Uniswap pool. So very likely inside job. Um, this is just reading between the lines here, right? It's very, it's very likely that, you know, stuff like this, you see this, and it's a shame because it's 100% the fault of the creators, like 100% the fault. I mean, they're obviously, so, Typically speaking with these smart contracts, why they leave an upgrade option there is in the future if they want to do something special and a community agrees on it, they execute. I just want to set a small distinction too. A lot of times when a community agrees and votes, it's the developers that execute the code. And it's a developer that has a access to the deployer, right? And this is very important. They need to keep it safe. And this is a situation where they did not keep it safe. And it's a situation where audits don't help. Right, audits can check to see. Okay, here's an upgrade function. We hope that you guys can keep your safe the keys properly. But at the same time, if you don't keep, if the developers don't keep their um, keys safe, this can happen. This is 100% part of the design of the contract, which allows for this upgrade. It allows for this minting of new tokens, and this is 100% what happens. So I definitely feel like you know people have this suspicion as an inside job. It's very likely as someone who was very close to the team, right, or an ex-team member, that they execute this, and this is 100% criminal. This is 100% criminal. But anyway, so they proceeded to go and empty out the Uniswap pool. I mean, the paid 
group, the pay team, they're trying to deal with this right now. But I think the damage is pretty much done at this current point where people's liquidity have been emptied out. People who are providing liquidity to Uniswap, you know, their funds are now stolen by this one hacker. Not cool, not cool. And um, it's unfortunate. Like this is something that happens in crypto a lot where a lot of teams, they end up not having good security. So definitely want to say, yeah, <laughs> security is important. They're getting as many people to help as possible. I mean, they uh, they help Cypher, Blade, Parsec, Archeron, Certic, Munify. It's a little bit too late, to be honest. But anyways, I'm not going to throw too much shade there. I think this is... But I think they deserve... They do, do deserve quite a lot of shade and a lot of criticism for the way they handled it. Oh, not the way they handled it. They handled the security, rather. Because no one is meant to touch your key, right? Like, we've been talking on this channel, not your keys, not your crypto, not your key, not your keys, not your project either. And very clear that they did not safeguard those keys properly. It's pretty apparent by the market. So, anyways, I think that's a stark reminder to a lot of projects to keep their keys safe and to ensure that this doesn't happen. But at this current point, paid there's the team itself has not you know pulled the rug but they're probably going to continue building they're probably going to try to recover from where it is but i'm not going to speculate too much on what's going to happen here um it could be the case that they try to recover and um they reissue contracts and reissue coins we'll have to just uh, wait on that like i said i actually don't hold any paid so i'll be watching this more or less from an outsider's perspective and i do know that quite a lot of you other youtubers hold it so i guess you know, uh, it is a situation where they'll probably be more authoritative with if they had initial pay tokens to figure out what they're doing because, yet again, um, I didn't have it. I was not affected. So lucky me, right? Anyways, uh, uh, Fike says, um, buy the pay dip. It's going to be difficult because we don't know um, at what point are they going to do the restoration if they're going to do it. This is a problem where the team is going to have a lot of issues, right? Like, you know, do you issue tokens to people who were affected by the hack or prior to the hack and try to restore there or, you know, continue from this point onwards? I mean, you know, that's going to be a little bit hard, right? So anyways, who knows? Who knows? Anyways, um, I'm not going to speculate too much on that. I don't think it's, uh, it's something that needs to be followed on. So that's one of the biggest ones. And I'll talk about the other negative thing, which is with the Meerkat exploit. Okay, so this happened also last week, and Meerkat was one of the things that I luckily didn't jump in on, but Meerkat was extremely devious, and it's one of the reasons why I'm not as aggressively jumping into Binance Smart Chain farms as of this moment, right? So let me go quickly tell you what it was. It was so it was a $31 million theft, so the developer managed to steal $31 million from the contract, I'll give you the entire story. So there was a good Medium article explaining this. Um, all right. So what was happening? So this was a new farm that people was launched and people were... It was a copy of Alpaca. So it... Um, it copied a lot of what Alpaca was doing. And because Alpaca was so popular and people were depositing and earning money, they were yield farming on Alpaca, people felt that Meerkat could do the same thing. So people really aped into this. But what was happening was that the developer was extremely, extremely, extremely devious, right? So what they did was that there was a function called set admin, admin right? So this admin has a very powerful key. And what they did was the oldest trick in the book. To avoid people from figuring out that they built this back door. So essentially they built this back door of this very powerful admin key that can steal people's funds. Typically speaking, this admin key will be removed or destroyed. But they were very sneaky. Instead of destroying the key, they replaced what was admin slot. But the slot here, instead of typing an O, they typed a zero. Right? This is the devious part because if it's code, Every letter counts, right? So if you're if you're kind of destroying the admin slot, you want to make sure it's the right admin slot. And this is a situation where by replacing the zero with a the O with a zero, it will look exactly the same. So for people who are scanning through the contract, they were doing the due diligence, they were looking at everything and trying to make sure that the admin keys were destroyed. It's like destroying the one ring of power, right? You go to Mount Mordor, it's a lot of rings analogy. Going to Mount Mordor, destroying that ring of power, tossing it into Mount Mordor. But the thing is, the developers tossed the wrong ring. It's admin slot, right? Slot with a zero, right? So they use that old book, uh, oldest trick in the book, 
And now this means that admin slot, which is the one ring of power, was never changed. It was never destroyed. So by just replacing that zero, the O with a zero, they managed to sneak back past a lot of people who are looking at the code. And they met and people when they, because people look at the code, they think, oh, it's safe now. Admin slots destroyed. It's fine. It's set to zero. We're safe. Let's go. But what happened was that because of this replacement in character, we, because of this like slight sleight of hand, these developers managed to keep admin slot, which meant that they were able to move the funds out. They were able to steal essentially what is thirty-one million dollars. Now. That was stolen around three days ago, and the latest update for this that came on March 6th was that developers say that they'll return the $31 million, claiming that this was actually a test. This was, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I found this was, um, uh, this was kind of interesting. So uh, let me take a essential. Oh, this is not a good news article yet again, sorry. Apologies for that, Mirror Cat. There was a there was a Twitter post. I mean, it's just um, uh, uh, Meerkat Finance. Let me just find it. Let me find your original message because that was kind of hilarious to read. Um, uh, to read from this. Um, all right. So this 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 popped up. All right. So hello, my name is John Boo, the developer of Meerkat Finance. DeFi is essential, but has a lot of flaws and is flourished by human greed. Meerkat is a project tests user greed and subjectivity. Meerkat does not entice users and investors to participate. With the help of, with the aim of helping users realize the potential of danger in smart contract, the subjectivity in the audit process of audit companies, Meerkat invited a third party hacker to attack the vulnerability through the pro verify proxy contract. Oh, with over 33k built, um, BNB and nearly 20, uh, 14 million BSD withdrawn from the vault in the attack. Since this is a trial, all right, this is the other way. Since this is a trial, Meerkat do, uh, will do data updates and intimate spot contracts to reimburse users and the documentation and the refund process will be notified by me within a few hours. Don't worry, your money is safe. I'm a verified Meerkat implementer. I would execute blah, blah, blah here. Um, so this popped up on Twitter, um, a few things. So people are reading this as they're going to do a refund, right? And uh, there's the, the, the logical conclusion here was that the developer initially thought he was going to get away with $31 million. But because it's on Binance Smart Chain, it's very likely that this developer got tracked down. Their identity got exposed, and they were pretty much facing jail at that point, right? If you steal $31 million and you get caught, well, jail is your next destination. Right, so it's very likely that this message was sent up after the developer got caught. So you know they they already knew they they knew what they were doing. Right, they knew that they were replacing that zero with an O to hide the fact that they built this back door into their contract so they can steal everything. And they successfully executed their theft. They got away. They're on their getaway car, running home until they realize, oh crap, there is a bunch of police officers at our door right now. So they very hastily maybe type this message and say, oh yeah, actually this was just to test human greed. We're going to refund everything, guys. Just jo joking, joking, joking. We didn't really want to steal anyone's money. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, that's kind of the take. I, I, I will say a few things here. Um, okay, first and foremost, um, this is the latest update. We don't really know if this is real or not. Um, it might not even be the actual Meerkat developer. It might be the uh, it might even be Binance, I would say. It might be Binance employees typing this up. Who knows, right? Who knows at this point? point? Um, it does sound a little bit fishy. You know, we have all of these um, hack refund scams that go on. So yet again, I'm not going to say that this is the actual one. Who knows if it's real or not? When I first read this, I actually thought it was fake because there's so many of these like, oh, I'm a hacker. I'm doing refunds. All right, send me one big Binance coin. I'll send you two. Ha, ha, ha. Like it almost sounds like that, but we'll have to follow this and see what happens. I'm always more suspicious than I should be at this current point, or I'm I'm more on the suspicious front, and that's always been helpful at this current point. So yet again, I was lucky I didn't jump into Meerkat. It's a situation right now when buying a smart chain farming that I'm a lot less aggressive. So I don't really jump into things at first glance, and I rather be late than sorry. This is the same thing that happened during the last DeFi run where everyone was yield farming, where everyone was going crazy. And then I was just like, you know what, let's pull back a little bit. And this is the exact same attitude I'm adopting because 
this is a time when rugs and hacks can lead to a 100% fund loss. So luckily, all right, so luckily, very likely that this developer was caught. They'll try, they'll probably do some sort of refund in the future. So just look into it. But very likely it's probably just going to be automated. Who knows, right? But um, we're going to follow this up on this channel, but I'm going to be very suspicious of everything I read from this point onward. So that was the message. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. Definitely, that that message was so sus. I mean, I it's just suspicion all over it, right? This developer is testing this. Like, make up a better story. Come on, make up a make up a uh, make up a much better story than that, please, please, please. All right, let's finish up with some news going on. So on the Ethereum's front, so there is going to be a new EIP for a fee market overhaul that's happening in July. So this is meant to help with the current gas congestion issues. Effectively, it's going to try to lower the gas prices and also help hopefully help miners as well. So this is coming in July. It is going to be con contested a little bit because this EIP... Um, 1559, a lot of miners don't support it at this current point. We'll have to see what happens, but hopefully it gets passed because we do need a little bit of relief from um, what's happening with the gas fees right now. We also have some stuff on the NFT news. So the Bur Burnt Banksy, this is a, a Banksy that was bought by people. It sold for 228 ETH. I mean, people are just throwing ETH like dollars at this point at paintings and stuff. I don't know. It's magic. I think I think this is uh this this market is definitely heating up. And you can also buy the first ever tweet. The current bid is two point five million dollars. So I feel like I'm I'm definitely out of my scope here uh, with how much money these people are willing to pay for these cryptocurrency uh, non fungible tokens. But I think the lesson here is that there are people who are willing to do this, right? And it's not me. All right. I don't have that much money to spend on a uh, a image, a GIF, a something I can save on my phone. But I think what's starting right now is that the rise of a new trend, right? So I think when people when baseball cards first came out, people were like, "Oh, why would people collect this? This is stupid, right? It's just it's just a piece of card, right?" Same thing with um Pokemon cards, right? When it first I came out, I was playing Pokemon cards, right? I wasn't saying, oh yeah, I want to collect them. And then 20 years later, I flipped them for money, right? Why would you do that? But I think right now with the non-fungible tokens is that because they can represent a emotion, like for example, I mean, with Jack, um, he's setting up, he's selling his first tweet, right? And because it's limited in supply, it's trackable on blockchain, people can also very easily trade and sell this this becomes a very powerful asset. So I think um, Elijah Kell Kellen says uh, comics books too. So this is yet again, we're starting to new, see the new trend of collecting. I can think this is becoming something that's on the headlines every single week. And I do say this, I do say that, you know, for me, I'm not someone who will spend $2.5 million on that. I mean, it's very clear that I'm not that sort of person, but I definitely see that this trend is coming and there's definitely a lot that I'm helping on to make this happen as well with my experience in the gaming industry to try to implement both this NFT stuff as collectible, but also as functional object. So recently I'm an advisor on Chain Games and Chain Games is launching very, very soon. Um, Chain, not, not Chain Games, Chain Guardians, sorry, my bad, my bad. Chain Guardians, Chain Guardians, you can check out ChainGuardians.io. They're doing NFTs and they're doing comic su superheroes for all crypto people. So they already have the art there. I've also taken a look at what of the games that they're trying to produce with it. So basically having that nostalgia for these blockchain elements, like this is like a CZ character. It's super handsome, but you know, and also I'm doing some help with refinable as well. So those are the two kind of two key projects that I'm working on and helping out on in the near time. Um, refinable website just got launched last week. So <laughs> excuse us the excuse the lack of Google search power for that too. Anyway, so that's kind of coming up um, around the horizon. Also, I'm taking a deep dive into Vortex DeFi. So they're doing yield farming, but cross chain. And I think this is something that's very powerful, coming very powerful around. You guys know I'm yield farming a lot of chains and doing it manually, but being able to execute this across chain and being able to deploy capital like this. I think a lot of people get confused about this whole yield farming thing, but it's actually very easy to understand, right? Uh, at the essence, it's almost like a bank deploying money, 
right? You know, when you deposit your money in a bank, the, the bank that just doesn't just like, oh, say, oh, your money sat there, right? They secretly invest your money. And this is something that's happening with yield farming and all these protocols that help people farm, where people can deposit their funds and then they can see on chain where it gets deployed across different chains or across different projects. And this becomes very powerful. It's, a, it's where capital can be deployed. It's kind of where the modern economy came from, right? This is not going to ring well with all the gold people out there who like gold and say, yeah, gold should be just kept in a vault somewhere and hidden forever. But with how modern economic works, um, funds get deployed to help build infrastructure or help do X projects. And this is where we have all that growth, right? So rich people's funds or your, even your own funds, when they're sitting in a bank, they're actually actively being deployed somewhere. So this is pretty much what yield farming is. It can deploy funds across multiple chains. And that's something that Vortex DeFi is doing at its current point. And what they're trying to link up is like uh, link up modules with Ethereum and with Polkadot and trying to deploy that at this current point. So definitely taking a lot of eyeing looks at this whole infrastructure that's happening at this current point of time, because I feel like Right now, this is where it goes. So right now, if you actually look at the app right now for our Vortex, you can just see it goes to AVA. So it goes around for 6%, which is yet again higher than banks, but a bit lower than what I'm getting. And eventually what's going to happen, I feel like, is that once this kind of network grows out a bit more, the yield is going to be higher. And that's what I'm eyeing for at this current point in time. And also being, of course, more accessible to people to understand what's happening. All right, so that's pretty much summarizing all the news and updates there are out there. Let's take a quick look. I'm definitely doing a lot. Like, um, I don't know, it's one of those situations where I'm super busy nowadays doing everything. I'm definitely looking a lot at um, both all the launch pads that's coming up, there's TrustSwap and there is DuckStarter. And we also have Happy coming out very soon on Dow Maker. So, this is something that I'm like, actually not recently, two weeks ago invested on, but it's going to start their IDO on the 10th. So that is happening this week. So if you guys are interested in something that's relatively important at this current point, so Happy is the first um, Oracle for cybersecurity. All right. So today we talked about two major hacks, one of them relating to paid and the other relating to um, Meerkat. And cybersecurity hacks are going to be on the rise. That's a given because of the way how smart contracts operate. They operate where code is law. I think a lot of people don't understand that code is law. And if code is law, then these guys are the police for that new law, right? So a cybersecurity protocol, if it gets implemented under other contracts, if something does happen, something wrong, something does go wrong, it can potentially prevent hackers from even transferring funds or tampering and doing further damage. And this is something that's super, super important because being able to successfully verify that a hack has happened allows on-chain enforcement on blockchain, which is super powerful. So anyway, so that's happy. It's coming on the 10th on pools. There was also TrustSwap Launchpad. There's going to be quite a few projects coming up here as well. Let me just double check. Let me see what's available here. Obviously, I need to launch pads. So currently, currently there's bit, bit cash pay that's coming up, but there's going to be more upcoming as well for TrustSwap. And also at this current point, Polka Foundry and Key Tango are whitelist available for Duck Starter. So at these current points, uh, Duck Starter has whitelist for Key Tango and Polka Foundry, both of which I am going into. So yeah, that's kind of kind of update for that. Anyways, um, that's pretty much it. Let's answer some Q and A. Is law code? Yes, code is law. Says uh, Chris Abbott. Yeah, that's just the way how crypto oper operates. It's pretty crazy. Um, Joseph Saylor says there's a garbage pail kids card that goes for 17k. Goes to show you people ju uh, will just spend. Goes to show you people will just spend to spend. You can look at um, Adam Bomb card anytime online. LOL. I think so. I think a lot of people don't really understand um, NFTs. And I think I've also was on that track as well. I think if you look at my tweets and comments from six months ago, like for me, I will never spend that much money. I feel like that is such a reckless amount of money to spend on a GIF. But 
That being said, all right. That being said, my base mentality is that I'm not a big collector. Like, I feel like that's something that this season I'm definitely talking to more people who are collectors and finding out what they like. Um, so yet again, it's like goes back to my game design experience where I definitely talk to people, and everyone has a different base personality type. Like, I would never ever pay anything above like thirty dollars for an image. I want to support artists. Sure, that's great. I mean, I love that theory of supporting artists and supporting their art and their passion and whatnot. But I've also worked as a game designer. I've worked with artists in the past, and I can tell you they're happy, right? They don't need that bonus money or anything. Um, I I just don't see why something like this can go for mil um you know millions of dollars. But there is a market, and there is a collector's market out there. So yet again, I feel like it's something that I am、um, really pushing myself to understand, to understand what works for people, what people like, what people don't like, and talking a lot to invest、uh, to both not investors but serious collectors in this space. So I think there will be a lot of people who are confused by this NFT thing, and I think the the whole crypto space is not helping either because I know there are a lot of whales out there that try to wash trade or manipulate the price of NFTs. So there's definitely a lot of noise as well in this case, right? There's a lot of the the no, there's there's very very like very strong noise to signal if that makes sense. So the signal is not very strong, but the noise is very strong in this space. So yeah, that's pretty nasty. It's nasty. Um, can we get a bot on our side? Um. I'm just looking at Michael Liu. Well, we got a bot on our side. Question mark.、Um, looks like there was a lot of comments on bots and stuff, and what's happening. So thank you, mods, yet again for、uh, deleting lots of messages on here at this current point in time.、Um, yep. Yep. Okay.、Um, Jonas says a shiny Charizard Pokemon card is 13k, but the same digital card is worthless. You really think Nintendo will not make an NFT for that? They might. They might. They might.、Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but right now I think it's it's very hard to include everything into logic at this current point because there is definitely a lot of noise. It's very possible that we see on the news that there's these huge bids right now, right? Like Jack is buying is selling his tweet for like 2.4 million, but who knows who's bidding, right? It could be anyone. It could be themselves.、Um, you know, it's relatively easy to make an Ethereum account or make a Flow account and just start bidding. On an item that you own, especially if your project, it's、um, if you get the money at the end, if it's the same person, right? So this is、um, something that's quite、uh, real at this current point.、Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think I'm gonna take. That's pretty much it. There's gonna be a lot more. So what I'm gonna say for you guys is that on Wednesday we definitely have a more altcoin oriented episode for an episode. So it'll be on the same time. So we'll launch at the same time on Wednesday, but Wednesday will be a much more chillax episode that coming up. So if you guys want to talk a lot about, you know, different coins that's going on, you know, your bows, your Vikings, whatever. But just remember, like I'm a farmer, I don't speculate on these coins as much, right? So、um, if you guys want to talk about that, we'll definitely do a longer episode on Wednesday to go.、Um, no fear says, how long did Pokemon Go last? Three to four months. Hey, 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 hey! I still play Pokemon Go, okay, and I still know people who play Pokemon Go, okay? K, K, understood, understood. All right. I actually have a. I recently actually re got into about Pokemon Go. It's kind of crazy, kind of crazy, and cringe at the same time. But anyways,、um, okay. We got Osho Fever says, "Hey yo, you skipped over your five dollar、um, chat. Thank you so much for your donation." So I do have a chat policy right now where we don't do requests for chats. So I'm hoping you, like yet again, a, a donation is a donation. But because of how chat has so many different. Um, uh, People request to talk about X, Y, and Z, so we're not doing that anymore on this channel at this current point. Especially,、uh, it's great. So,、um, if you want to donate、um, and you expect me to talk about your coin, please do ask for a refund from YouTube.、Um, you know, donations or to, I'll take donations as donations. I really appreciate it, but at the same time, I definitely don't. Uh, want to have the obligation to talk about it, so I definitely I want to thank you for your donations, but at the same time, I definitely don't want to divert too much. Like I don't want to have the 
um, the feeling that um, you know I will definitely talk about a project or X, Y, and Z if someone donates. So yet again, um, please do ask for a refund if you feel like that is something that you were um, expecting and did not get. So yeah, um, at that point, that's pretty much it. So yeah, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much. Um, answer the man's super chat or give his money back. So I don't have an option to refund, but um, I definitely feel like, um, you know, I would definitely want to keep everyone happy, but at the same time, it's definitely not possible um, to answer requests or something like that on this channel. So apologies for that. Um, just being, being fair. I think um, a lot of people don't understand this, but I do this show mostly as a way to um, for the community to get updated. Um, this year has actually been a situation where I'm an investor first and a YouTuber second, and that has worked out super well. So in terms of like investments are actually, you know, a primary source of my income. I don't really use YouTube for money. So a lot of people probably think, you know, you know, this whole YouTube scene, there's a habit of people YouTubers just literally begging for money. I can tell you I don't need that um, <laughs> at all whatsoever. Uh, no, thank you. But I, this is for our community. This is for people. This is why I read the comments. I want everyone to be here and happy. And I want to look after people who don't pay as well. Um, and a lot of people who are here just for the community, this is what I'm here for. I do want to thank the members as well, the members who do provide $2 per month. That's also been, you know, it helps a little bit with the channel. It actually pays for most of the bills that comes from the uh, maintaining this stuff. I haven't actually really pocketed any of that. It's, I don't think it's necessary. Most of my money comes from investments. In fact, you know, yield farms can take care of me for a long time. So, yet again, um, I don't want people to have the expectation. So please just do ask for a refund if you have the expectation that you can, you know, get me to talk about this topic. This is definitely a passion project for me. So yeah, thank you guys. And thank you guys seriously for, um, <laughs> just thank you everyone for those chats and thank you everyone for those likes. I really do appreciate that. And this, I will definitely try to look at everyone here in this chat as well. And that has been something that I've been doing for a long time where I don't just look at the paid chat guys. This is for the community. This is for everyone here. This is for everyone who's watching this. So definitely appreciate that for you guys. Um, yep. And, uh, um, Elijah Kellen says, what I love about this channel and why I trust it. Thank you so much. So Diamond Hand says, Diamond, love, and peace. So anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for that. Um, Eggy says, Michael is in chat mode right now. Man, crypto has been really great. I'm being very thankful every, like, it's it's a situation where I've been thankful for a long time, but um, I'm actually super thankful this year. Um, I recently did some birthday celebrations, so it was recently my birthday. I, I do keep these things a little bit private, but anyways, um, I had some birthday celebrations. I'm getting a little bit older. Um, I'm definitely reflecting a lot on my time, and I'm very grateful for what YouTube has given me. So, yeah, I've been very, very happy, very, very grateful. Um, you know, this market has just been super, right? to be honest. It's just been super. I mean, even, like, stupid small things, like... Um, I have all nodes up. I'm running an ETH 2.0. I'm actually running two ETH 2.0 nodes, but I'm not showing you guys everything here um, because of data um, to protect my own privacy for God's sake. But, you know, we have a daily income of 0.075 ETH, um, ETH to USD. So I'm passively making $12 per day. <laughs> it's not bad, $12 per day. It's not, it's it's okay. But anyways, we're, we're, we're doing that um, slowly and... Um, yeah, so it's been super great. It's been super great, to to be honest. And also, I just lost my video. So um, we got uh, Shanky Shakta says, Related wishes, man. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for coming in today. So I'm, I'm losing my video because I think I have a one-hour limit on that. Not one-hour limit, one-hour battery life. Let me just quickly...
All right, so that should be it. That's good. Um, Lama Six Six says, "Happy birthday, Michael! Thank you, guys. Thank you, cheers. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, guys. So thank you, guys, so much for that. So that's a little bit why on weekends I was a little bit um, away AFK this week. So yeah, we're going back to um, pretty much refreshed and back into action this week, though. So I'm very, very excited to uh, enjoy this ride with you guys. I shall see you guys very, very soon on the next episode. Please do smash up the likes. You know." You don't need to donate. I don't ask for donations. Like, no, no, never, never. Uh, definitely don't have the expectation. I'll talk about whatever you want when you donate. It's um, apologies for that. That's not what this channel is about. This is definitely for everyone here. Definitely read everyone's comments. And don't forget to like this channel. It does help with the YouTube algorithm. It does help. So that's one thing you can do. It's for absolutely free. Just smash up those like buttons. Just destroy that. Let's get everything on the road. Um, yeah, and with that, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. See you guys next time. Podcast. And the reason why it's called Bitcoin Out of Box is because we have long interview segments very much exploring the detail of the newest and latest of what's going on in this whole cryptocurrency space. Whole idea of it is to bridge that gap between knowledge privileged institutional investors and the rest of us here in this space. Now with the podcast, it's on everything. So it's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Google Podcasts, it's on Spotify. Just search it anywhere, Bitcoin out of the box. So just add that onto a playlist and let's just follow the new episodes when it's released. Next up, we also have the Box Mining newsletter. So this happens roughly bi-weekly. We give you an update of the latest that's going on in a very summarized, condensed format. So this is perfect for anyone that wants an overview of the market. Say for example, what's happening with OKX, the biggest event, or maybe the little things like what's happening with different coins and overall the trend. So what I use the newsletter for personally myself is to understand what kind of phase we're in in crypto to kind of get kind of in tune. So if you don't read crypto every day, the newsletter is perfect for you. Last but not least, in the link down below, if you're a Telegram user, we have the Box Mining Announcements channel. So this is to announce to you basically what's the latest videos coming up, but also we have a daily update, a community-driven daily update to provide you an idea of the latest updates on a day. And a lot of people have been using that to get informed of the crazy amounts of trends that we see. And I have to give a big thank you for Claudio, our community member for doing this. It's just been phenomenal. Definitely wanna give you a shout out there, Claudio, as well for that. And taking us to the end of the live stream, so make sure, number one, you click like and subscribe on this video because it really does help this channel. And then, of course, ch check out the podcast. It's one of the best ways to know a little bit more, to extend that knowledge, especially in your spare time. And then, of course, check out the newsletter. If, you're, um, you, know, if you want those updates and summaries and trends, newsletter is the place for you. And with that, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you have a good one. See you in the next video.